There's tons of ways that AI can bring change to the business world. And I honestly believe that the recruitment business can definitely benefit from a little bit of AI, at least in terms of matching the right jobs to the right candidates or speeding that process up. If you haven't done so already, do subscribe to the channel now so that you don't miss any future uploads. And don't forget to ring that bell icon too. My name is Alex, and today we're gonna take a look at how to set up a basic recruitment database using Airtable and make our life just that much easier using AI. Now, in our typical fashion, first and foremost, we're gonna take a look at how this whole thing works. Then I'm gonna take you through the setup of the database and finally, I'm going to talk a little bit about the automation that's behind this. Now, if you want to download the template for this automation, just like I have set it up myself, there's a link down in the description below where you can basically go ahead and do that. Now, let's get started with how this works. So what I have here is I have a list of candidates, just a little bit about those candidates, you know, the basics, age, location, experience, skills. That's it. Then we have jobs. Jobs have their own set of rules, like the responsibilities, the qualifications. And of course, there's more to that. There's the company name, there's a location. And the idea here is that we want to press a button and get the system to match all of our candidates or all the potential candidates to each job and also give us the reason why and like a score so that we know that, look, these are the best candidates and these are like extras that we can definitely consider. So let's do that. I'm going to just go ahead and press find matches for this particular job. It's for a custom support team leader. And the system after a few seconds going to say matching now. So it has started working. Then it's going to go into basically a mode that is going to be comparing the matches that AI kind of gives it. There we go, processing AI recommendations and matching complete. And there we go. We have our list of matches. And if I go to my job candidate matches table, I can instantly see that AI has classified Jamie Bennett as a 90% match for the job, Michael and Carlos. Uh, also, there's some notes. So these notes are from AI and basically it just tells us why it thinks that Jamie is the best match. He's located in San Francisco, matches the job location, good. She has experience handling high volume tech support, excellent. Training new staff, I'm fluent in English and Spanish. Is that true about Jamie? Customer service, high tech. It's perfect. It's exactly what we need. Let's take a quick look at other people. So Michael, however, he's located in Seattle, which does not match the job location. He also does not have proficiency in Spanish. That's why there is a big delta between Jamie and Michael. What about Carlos? Experienced manager of supervising departments, Spanish, but he is in Florida. So basically they are decent fits, Michael and Carlos, but as you can see, they're not in San Francisco. So maybe it's a good idea to reach out to these two guys and say, look, are you willing to relocate? But anyway, bottom line is that's how the system works. And this is just scratching the surface because from there, once you've done your matching, you can also potentially generate a PDF and send it to your clients all done within a few minutes. Now, in this particular example, we're only dealing with a handful of candidates. Technically, because we are using ChatGPT or OpenAI ChatGPT4 in this particular case, we should be able to go through a, a nice amount of candidates. So if your particular database has like thousands of candidates, I would probably think about using Claude AI because that has got 100,000 tokens that we can use. So and most likely the results are going to be similar in, uh, in their nature. So yeah, now let's take a look at how the database is designed. Okay, so the database in itself doesn't really have the, all that much complexity. We have our candidates table, just the name, 
age, location, experience, skills. All of these are just text fields, nothing really fancy going on. We also have a hidden field, which is our record ID, which we'll, we'll be using in our automation a little bit later on. And also we have the job candidate matches a link that matches candidates to the job candidate matches table, essentially where we marry one candidate to a given job. Then we have the jobs, the jobs table, essentially the place where we can store all of our jobs in. Again, nothing really fancy going on here, just the name, the matching status, the find matches, which is our trigger. We have also an interesting thing to point out is that you can see how long it took to match something and you can basically track the progress of the automation as it's happening. Then we have the company name, again, it's just a text field, the location, just a text field, the responsibilities, just a text field, and qualifications, just a text field. And it doesn't have to be too clean either. So yeah, that's basically that. Then we have a couple of hidden fields. One is a record ID field that basically pulls in the record ID for that record. Then we have highest percent. So highest percent is a roll up field that rolls up and brings up the highest percentage from the job candidate matches field, because later on we use that to compare and bring out the best candidate. And you can see that this is how it works. Now let's jump into job candidate matches so that you can see how some of this is set up. So first and foremost, let's open up all the hidden fields. Right, so the leftmost field is just in the concatenation of the candidate space pipe space and then job. Then we have the matching percentage, but I want to take your attention to this little field here. So this is what our automation prints when we ask ChatGPT to provide us with a scoring. So what we do with match percentage, we basically turn the value of match percent text into value because it's really a piece of text. It's not a real percent at that point. So what we do, we just turn it into value and then we format it as a percent like so. What we have, like I said, match percentage text, that's just a text field. Notes, these are the notes. This is the field where we print the notes by chat GPT for that candidate for that job. Then we have a link to the job itself. Then we have the highest percent from job, which is a lookup of the highest percent rollup field that we were talking about a few seconds ago from the job, and we're just bringing this in. Then we have a formula field that compares the match percentage to the highest percent from the job. If these two are the same, then you get the best match. If not, it's just blank. So you can tell that Jamie is the best match because the highest percent from the job is 90, and Jamie also has 90. Therefore, because these two match, we get the best match tag placed in this field. Then we have the record ID from the job just being used later on the automation. And then finally, the link to the candidate themselves. Without any further ado, let's take a brief look at how the automation is generally set up. Let's do it. Okay, so the basic premise behind the automation is as follows. We have our trigger that happens on the job level that essentially triggers the automation in make. And as things progress, we gradually add stuff to the matching status. And also the automation itself adds the pairs of job and candidate to the job candidate matches. As we trigger the process from jobs, that flows into our make scenario over here. And I'm just gonna break this down for you in its most basic way. If you wanna learn more, like I said, there is a link down in the description where you can download this template if you so wish to. So the scenario in make essentially is con it consists of a webhook that fetches our record ID and then we get that record ID the job record ID over module two. We update that job with the latest status. Then we iterate through the candidates and we compile their data into one big text. 
then through the OpenAI ChatGPT4 module, we create a prompt where we essentially compare the candidates versus the job requirements versus the specific job requirements and we tell it to produce results. Then the next step is that we post a quick little update to the job itself saying that, hey, we're processing. Then we actually process the results. And the way that we do that is that we iterate through the results from the suggestions that ChatGPT has given us. We search them. So because we want to avoid having duplicate matches just because we've reran the automation. Essentially, I'm imagining that you could have a, a list of candidates and you have a list of jobs, but suddenly you had a new candidate and or suddenly you had, you know, five new candidates and you want to see if they match for that job. So, yeah, that's why we search through those results. And if we haven't matched that candidate and that job before, then we create a match. Finally, at the very end, we basically uh, fetch the job again and post our final update that, hey, everything is done like so. And yeah, that's basically it in terms of the automation in its very most basic form. So that's it, guys. Thank you very much for watching. What do you think of this little approach that I've showcased for recruitment? Does it work for you? Did you find this useful at all? Post your comments down below. If you do have questions, again, about anything regarding the video, let me know down in the comments and I'll make sure to respond ASAP. That's it from me. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.